The culture of censorship out there, this film shouldn't have been made, is designed to force everyone to live in fear. The, the progressive left, fear of using language, fear of repercussions from speaking freely, fear of each other. They want a breakdown of societal norms. <laughs> Question of the day. For those of you who, who saw the film, what did you think of the Joker movie? Do you, what do you think about the media outrage, more importantly? Is it just clickbait? Yeah. Do you think there's some other reason for it? Also, this is something that I want to talk about today. Have you taken the time to contrast the, the critics' treatment of Joker with that of their treatment of the new Batwoman series? Uh, yeah. Let me know if it's something that's actually kind of occurred to you because it yeah. just stuck out at me like a like a sore thumb or a poorly made uh, poorly made TV show. So, <laughs> extremely poorly made. Let me give you like some. They're all whole scrapyard. The uh, the Joker. Uh, they had it debuted this weekend. We did a film review for those who are not members of Mug Club yeah. uh, behind the paywall. Um, and ever since the trailer dropped just a few months ago, leftists they've been hysterical about it, claiming it should have never been made because it has a white male protagonist. Uh, It'll inspire mass shootings. Whatever. In case you missed it. One of those critics is George Mason University film professor Mason Tiago. She calls Warner Let's Brothers remember Studio that professor. and filmmaker Todd Phillips' decision to make such a film irresponsible after a slew <laughs> of that? mass shootings in the country <laughs> the childish and then exhibiting behaviors <laughs> similar to that of a Joker. We're a traumatized society, and you're really going to throw in a blockbuster film, a film with, professor, with <laughs> millions, hundreds of millions of dollars behind it, I'm sorry, but no, it's not that easy. And with one of the most iconic characters in the cultural lexicon, you don't get away with it that easy. I love it. First off, before we get into this, I'm sorry, no. Well, hold on a second. Isn't your job as a professor to articulate a counter argument? Right. No. Okay, I'm sorry, but it's just, I can't even. Thank you, PhD. Uh, yeah, it is remarkable to, to me. Even. And something also that you see from the left is they assume that there's one person who can control everything, right? Like, you're yeah. just gonna you're gonna do this movie when we're traumatized. Like there's one person going, hey, it's a traumatized society. Let's just release this yeah. film to screw with all of them. The truth <laughs> is, people are individuals. Different people make different movies. Different people like different movies. This is the problem with seeing the entire world through the prism of collectivism. And I will come back to this: the con the, the constant through line that doesn't change uh, with both. You see, the Joker and Batwoman is, is there's a and We've seen this with other films. We talked about it with Tear Down the House, Knock Down the Walls, whatever. Knock Down the House? Knock Down the House. 100% rating down the house. along with Citizen Kane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's a toss up depending on movie yeah. night. A uh, huge <laughs> disparity between critic treatment and the viewer reaction. So let's start with the fact that it broke box office records. Yeah. 96 million at the yeah. box office. For people who didn't wow. see the film review, we all gave it mugs up. We all liked yep. it. I, there's Two some months. caveats there. I'm not sure that it works on its own as a standalone thriller. And I think it's a little bit of a trope to rely on the Batman world. Anyway, but it's it's a film worth seeing. Certainly yeah. a masterclass in acting and yeah. in filmmaking. Harkens yeah. back to I, good movies. I don't yes. think you can take that away from me. <laughs> no, it's a great So movie. a couple of, couple of points here. Um, the, the media hysteria, okay? The first question I think is important to ask is, how did the press succeed? in creating this narrative of a mass shooting being linked to the Joker movie. Yeah. And why would they want to do that in the first place? The why is important. Now, what they claim, their logic, is that a movie about a guy who snaps and shoots people, that that would yeah. inspire people to, to do that in real life. And this is the kind of hysteria, and I, I've seen Republicans do this as well, it has no basis in reality. We can go back yeah. to, to Tipper Gore, right, or rap mm -hmm. albums. The idea that video games cause violence. Research repeatedly shows us that there is no evidence that violent media like movies or video games inspire real world violence. And back then, Republicans yeah. were trying to say, well, don't blame guns, blame the movies. I'm saying, well, don't blame guns, don't blame the movies. That is not, neither yeah. one is the reason that people commit mass shootings. Yeah. Second reason for the hysteria, uh, I would say, is a fake news narrative. As soon as the trailer for the Joker dropped, the blue checkmarked verified Twitter world, <laughs> yeah. they were going around, you guys yeah. heard this, claiming that this would be a repeat of the Aurora shooting. Yeah. And in case you for, have forgotten that, they, they were claiming that the Aurora shooter had been inspired by the Joker and dressed as him. Yep. That's not true. Those claims, too. Wrong. wrong. They have wrong. no wrong. rug, fake <laughs> news. Wrong. The shooter wasn't dressed like the Joker, and he wasn't inspired by him. Nope. He dyed his hair red because his friend had dyed his hair blue, and the Joker's hair is green. And by the oh way, my God. only target is Dark Knight because it was a blockbuster film. He knew the theater would be packed. So let's yeah. keep this in mind. It's based on the idea that this could be a repeat attack of an attack that never actually occurred how they claimed that it right. had been carried yeah. out. Yeah. It wasn't a guy who was inspired by the Joker or, or, or dressed like him. But the narrative that they want to continue with that I see Aurora shooting, um, they, they actually, they use this so effectively, it spooked people so much yeah. that law enforcement yeah. actually increased security at some of these film locations. Counter-terrorism cops with automatic weapons 
flanked the entrance to what? the theater at glitzy Lincoln Center. Yep. Fans oh, were wanted and had their bags searched. Police bags. vehicles lined the block. The police presence will continue here and across the nation. Some officers will work undercover. Authorities say there are no credible threats, but many are wary and are not <laughs> taking any chances. Yeah, because when I see that no brigade credible. come down the gosh. street, I think, credible? Nah. <laughs> Toss oh up. Gosh. You be the judge. Here, no credible threats according to yeah. the authorities. What does that tell you? It tells you that rather than, rather than being able to focus on doing their job, which is to keep us, the people, safe, today's police officers have to spend more and more of their time and resources appeasing the leftist mob just for yeah. the purpose of optics, right? And that makes us all less safe. What do you think happens when you have every single police officer in town at the local multiplex for <laughs> an act of violence? It's not going to happen. They've admitted it. Oh my God. Yeah. They're responding so to stupid. rotten tomatoes, police officers. <laughs> yeah. 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 They're not looking at a oh, crime report. Insane. They're not getting the CB radio. They're going, oh, what's up at Metacritic today? <laughs> And what does the leftist mob do in response? They point to the increased security, which they and they, they, they claim that as yeah. proof that there was increased risk of danger from white males in the first place. Yep. You demanded the increased security. The police officer said, but there's no credible threat. They increased it anyway to appease you. And then you go, see, look, look at all these police officers. You shouldn't have made this film, Joaquin Phoenix, and you're a shitty rapper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh, but man. the media succeeded here in getting people so so freaked out that they actually turned it into a national story when someone was cheering at the movie. This yeah. came from ABC. Like, someone cheered at the film. That was the closest yeah. they had to a threat. My God. The, let me be really clear here. The only person, <laughs> Classic, man. The only person responsible for a mass shooting is a shooter. Okay, Murderers yes. Yes. need yes. to be held accountable as murderers. Yes. However, if, heaven forbid, a mass shooting does occur at this point. Wouldn't the media itself be more at fault than the film? If their hysteria yep. is predicated on the idea that films might glorify mass murders through giving mass murderers attention, isn't the worst thing that they could do? Create hysteria and give them attention? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Be beforehand, by the way, there hasn't even been a murder. There hasn't been a murder yet. It's like the minority yeah. report of fake news. <laughs> By the way, hit the oh, notification man. bell if you're subscribed because subscriptions don't mean a whole lot. Please do sign up, lottoscredit.com slash mugclub. You get uh, way more content, and it's mm -hmm. what keeps this, this content continuing on YouTube for all of you freeloaders. So here's another thing that surrounded this controversy. <laughs> we love you still. Identity politics, right? Common complaint of many of the, 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 the critics. I don't want to say reviewers, not the people. It's yeah. that the film is too sympathetic to white men. Oh, good this Lord. came from uh, Rolling Stone, I think. CNN even went as far as to say that the entire movie is based on racism. Huh? Oh, my wow. God. Did they watch the film? Well, this is what they were... <laughs> Apparently, they wrote that uh, the Joker snaps in reaction to being, quote, oppressed by people of color and goes up and it goes, they go on to claim Ooh, the movie draws from the same well of resentment that Trump strums with his racist rhetoric at his rallies, the fear of no longer being at the center of the political, what? social and cultural universe <laughs> with everyone uh, who isn't you positioned at perceived edges. I, yeah, I'm more and more convinced that these people never actually saw the movie because, OK, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. All right. The Joker kills exclusively white people. Oh, yes. They, yes. You know, they were really trying to make sure that <laughs> the melanin in the skin was directly correlated with the uh, severity of the murder. Yeah. So let's look. That would be racist. Contrast this <laughs> with the C. I'm not going to say sub CW. It's like it's like dead naming. I'm going to uh, dead name CW. The yeah. WB series. Boom. There w you go. That woman for contrast. <laughs> also, de it debuted last week. Been praised uh, for having the first openly lesbian superhero lead. Oh boy! Uh, in fact, mo most of the reviews cite this as a point in its favor. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't know why that. I, if you're just talking about plot points, right? Like, oh, by the way, this she happens to be a lesbian, but this is what makes this show so important. Oh boy! Is the superhero munches carpet? They even got MSNBC's <laughs> uh, Rachel Maddow. Speaking of which, to play oh. a recurring character, so you know it's good. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So Rachel Maddow there as a recurring character. I mean. The, the broad basically has a lesbian utility belt, okay? Oh this God. is the Batwoman. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting <laughs> to look at the media's reaction to between the take on the bat. Remember the Chappelle special we've talked? It was panned yeah. by critics. The public loved it. And then you had Hannah Gatsby, the feminist comedy special oh. where self-deprecation is self-humiliation. So this special will not be funny. That's what I look for. <laughs> it in wasn't comedy. funny. These things were <laughs> she praised. Was right. <laughs> right. We have a similar phenomenon here with the Joker and Batwoman. Yeah. Let's compare it. You look at the critic score of Joker wow. versus the audience score. And, and that's that. not huge, 69 to 90, but then you look at Batwoman, 71 from the tomato meter and 10% <laughs> from the audience. 10. And this, yeah. this isn't a, an appeal to populist oh. fallacy here. Like, yeah. I, I get that. 
the fact that most people like something or dislike something doesn't mean it's good or bad. Sure. But when consistently the 100% rated on Rotten Tomatoes films are not liked by the audience, yeah. and consistently content that, by the way, by every measurable barometer that you have, is artistic, has merit, the audience enjoys, and the critics hate, when it's all the time, you do have to ask yourself a question, why? Why have we gotten to a point where the people who are in charge, the gatekeepers of trying to control what we think about media or about content, why are they so far off the beam in relation to their audience who they're supposed to serve? Right, yeah, exactly. Before, before the pilot even aired, Ruby Rose, and I had to look her up, Ruby Rose. <laughs> yeah, who's that? Because I was still thinking about uh, uh, Citizen Kane, and it was Rosebud. Uh, I just got confused. Mm, the understand. stories just sort of meshed together. I'm still on green and blue. But then I red. realized, no, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> One is from Citizen Kane. One's from a shitty WB show. Yes. <laughs> now I can file it in my mental cabinet. Got it. This, this thing, Batwoman, is geared up. I mean, it is, it is T-ball yeah. for people to like it. How do I know? Lesbians and spandex. <laughs> like, guys should be rating this off the chart. <laughs> That's the 10%. Yeah. And they still hate it. <laughs> it you can't make money in Vice? I don't know how you. It's like it's like like some guy who sells crack and he has a leg up. He's the only game in town. He's like, I don't know. I guess there's no more market for crack. Oh Lesbians and spandex, people. Come <laughs> on, it's not no enough expectations to help it out, here. Oh anyway, gosh. Ruby Rose. She was saying beforehand that anyone who didn't like the series was an old white man. This is an interview from Glamour, quoting her directly. Some people might not see themselves on the screen and therefore not see the point. But there's obviously plenty of shows for people like that. There's plenty of shows for white. Old men. Hey, whoa, angry Butch. <laughs> Morgan Freeman would like a minute, okay? So would Sidney Poitier, Audrey Hepburn. Hell, Pat, Pat Marita. Pat Marita, you may not, who's Pat Marita? Mm -hmm. Mr. Oh, Miyagi. Yeah, Mr. Miyagi, baby. I prefer my senseis to be named Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> the point here is it's people, uh, uh, it's Sensei Bill. <laughs> sensei Bill. You rank. Seems to me, Bill, you're just having me wax your car. Yeah, pretty uh, much. A little bit. Yeah, that's, so, that's but, actually true. Oh, I've never next. done karate. I know. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> People, the point is, people of all stripes and colors, they've been leading men, leading women in films for a long time. We don't need to, and this is why it's so corrosive to the American family, it's this divide and conquer. We don't need to, I don't know about any guy here, you tell me if no. I'm, I'm wrong, your favorite film is Constantine and I hate you for it, yeah, yeah. but you know, I guess Keanu is partially Asian. Yeah, he? yeah, yeah, he is. Is that yeah, why? Yeah. Actually, no, really it's not. Is that why? It has to do because I enjoy the movie. Regardless. And then the prestige. You like yeah, the prestige. Yeah, I like the prestige. Okay, good. And so, I like it because it's a great movie. Yes, we don't need to see ourselves yeah. in the performer in the physical sense. We just need to see an element of ourselves, of the human condition in the character. If your lesbian superhero in Spanx doesn't have that, don't blame white men. Blame your angry bulldog writers. Though, really, blame their fathers who didn't hug them. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do not blame a viewer for not wanting to tune in to the Orvis promotional oh. hour, thinly veiled as superhero. Okay? Lesbian <laughs> spandex. And then, uh, this is a spoiler, another thing is they, they talk about, um, let, let's get into the sort of mental health issue, okay? Yeah. Spoiler, it's okay? A big one. All right, I, I can yep. see the comment yep. section. Is that enough time? Spoiler <laughs> alert. Spoiler alert? <laughs> I don't Pause. know. Spoiler. Pause. Wait, wait. Earmuffs, and go. Okay. <laughs> the Joker goes out of his way to make sure that people know he's not political. Okay. Yeah. He, he's very open in the film. If you Explicit. haven't seen it, he explicitly says he doesn't believe in anything. Yeah. His struggle is feeling alienated from the world around him. And he's grappling with, with mental illness, right? Which is something that we should be talking about yeah. a little bit more. If anything, we're talking about sort of themes in the film, the, the clown protesters uh, in the movie, the people who yeah. sort of become followers, sycophants of, mm -hmm. of Joker, they would honestly seem far more like leftists. And I understand how some people could make the argument that they're to be perceived as anarchists, but the fact of the matter is, these people who end up protesting against spoiler and supporting the Joker and rioting in the streets, they value the collective yeah. over the individual, and yep. they live to hate the Wayne family in this film, if for no other reason than their wealth. We don't know about, uh, about da is it, what's his name of the Thomas William Wayne? Wayne. Thomas, Thomas Wayne, Wayne. Yeah. basic bitch white guy name, I always forget that, like Bill. Half yes, the time I was, I was calling him Bob. <laughs> Brian was. Oh, for awkward. years, Brian was. Does he look like that a Bob? That was out of spite. Come on. But these people, they hate the Wayne family just because of their wealth. Yeah. And, and, and the Joker, by the way, this whole film, again, if we want to study the film and talk about the underlying subject, which is part of the design of film, yeah. we could argue that it portrays nihilism. It portrays this sort of decay yeah. of Western culture and that we've lost our moral sort of through line here, our sense of Judeo-Christian morality. And so you end up with someone like the Joker who feels alienated and has a God-shaped yeah. hole. You can make yeah. all kinds of arguments. The one that you can't make, however, is that 
He was racially motivated and <laughs> yeah. went out because he went the out and killed a made. bunch of white guys. Yeah. This, oh, this whole thing is ultimately about the left's push, push for censorship. There was an article I was reading today where they interviewed members of the Academy, and there was, of yeah. course, a female member of the Academy who said, I don't want to censor art, but we have an important responsibility to but understand right, that yeah. film can influence culture and said, I quote, this movie shouldn't have been made. Oh, wow. Oh. So Such ultimately, crap. let me make this to. case. If you're going to try and make, if you're going to try and make a case for parallels between the Joker and anyone in real life, it would have to be today's progressive left, particularly the media, the entertainment yep. industry yep. complex. The culture of censorship, okay, bear with me here. The culture of censorship out there, this film shouldn't have been made, is designed to force everyone to live in fear which is exactly what the Joker was looking to accomplish. Chaos, people to be divided from one another, fear, we, the, the progressive left, fear of using language, fear of repercussions from speaking freely, fear of each other. They want a breakdown of societal norms. They want to bring to fruition the chaos of class warfare. They Let me give you another, they constantly look for a scapegoat. Instead of taking responsibility, we talk about a mass murder, it's was it the guns? Was it the video games? Was it the movie? Instead of taking personal responsibility for the person who committed the crime, many leftists are mentally ill. I can go through the parallels all day. Most of all, just like the fake narrative aspect of the Joker for people who don't, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, in the end you sort of find out that maybe the whole thing was a fib. Maybe. Maybe the Joker was making it up, that maybe it wasn't true. It's just from sort of the, the, the insane mind of the Joker. Sorry, I hope I give you enough time. So just like this sort of fake narrative in the film of the Joker, this aspect of the film, in which you don't know whether you watched an actual origin story or it's just a tall tale told by a demented insane clown, with the media, similarly, we just never know when they're telling the truth. Hey there, YouTube. If you like this video, click one of these other videos playing in a box uh, up there and hit subscribe or the notification bell if you're already subscribed so you can find out about our new uh, non-controversial videos, which don't ruffle any feathers and, of course, are not a violation of YouTube's algorithms. <laughs> Everyone's welcome here, <laughs> except I don't know if we are, but it's our channel. Uh, I'm not sure how that works.